Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Berlin Buzzwords 2023. My name is Atita Arora, and I work for Open Source Connections. So today, as you can see, the topic on the slide itself, that we are going to be fast-paced learning about how to vectorize your open source search engine. So without further ado, let's get started with a small introduction from my side. I started working in the search and information retrieval space since uh, 2008. I am a committer and a contributor on several open source uh, projects uh, regarding uh, language analysis and information retrieval. I've got two master's degree in uh, computer application and uh, strategic business management. Should you wish to know more, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's about the company that I work for, so uh, Open Source Connections, which is a leading group of uh, consultants in the search relevance uh, domain. And we are also organizers of Haystack uh, US and EU conferences. So I think Jennifer this morning has already introduced the buzz about vectors and OpenAI and uh, everything that's actually changing. We are witnessing the paradigm shift in um, the realm of the information retrieval. And vector search particularly is very hot and buzzing because it's creating significant wave in revolutionizing search capabilities and unlocking a uh, lot of potentials in terms of uh, information retrieval, uh, recommendation systems, natural language processing, and even image recognitions. So to understand this buzz, of course, about vector search, we need to really understand the fundamental unit of the vector search, and that is a vector. Uh, a vector basically is a machine language representation of uh, the given object. Object that could be a text, image, audio, or video. And vector search uses transformer models that have capabilities to understand the semantic meaning beyond what keywords could express, such as knowing that iPhone with transparent back cover is very, very different from transparent back cover for iPhone, even though the keywords remain same in both the phrases. So it, this also implies, and I've tried to use this picture here on my um, left, to imply that objects with similar attributes uh, and the characteristics are closer to each other, which uh, takes the source relevance to a whole new level. So hopefully, with that short slide, you must have understood what vector search brings on um, to the table and to the party. Uh, we would now focus on um, the conventional challenges of uh, any given search engine. So obviously, let's take a quick uh, rundown that uh, different kind of uh, you know, search uh, challenges that we face in any given engine is understanding the intent of the queries in terms of uh, the language, long tail queries, from the vocab mismatch point of view, along with the challenges uh, posed by different type of contents you want to search, for example, text, image, audio, video, and many more. And in this era where trends and popularity of uh, the products change like dates on the calendar. Along with that, there are so many different kind of attributes, and there's no standardization. To give an example of the, of the missing uh, standardization here, that there are so many different companies in like sportswear, some of them called the apparels that you wear in a gym as gym wear, some call them active wear, some call them sports wear, which makes it like even harder. And I'm sure there are certainly many more challenges that I've not listed on uh, the slide. But uh, I'm sure the, the question right now in your head that we're learning to vectorize your uh, existing search engine. So can vectors really help me with all of these challenges? So the uh, short answer is, of course, yes. They provide us with vast possibility of addressing most of the challenges that we saw on the previous slide, especially about addressing long tail queries, vocabulary mismatch, and multilingual uh, queries, provided your model that you've chosen uh, supports it. Some of the vector models also are multimodal, for example, a Clip from uh, OpenAI. Uh, also supports uh, fetching content of uh, different type. So in case if the need is for searching different types of the content, it exposes a lot of potential uh, in uh, addressing to that need. Apart from that, it also has a lot of potential in terms of addressing to the marketing and promotion, and also to uh, address uh, the need for uh, recommendation and improvement of the product suggestions. So vector models per se have the capabilities to understand 
beyond what tokens and keywords could express. So it leverages the semantic meaning, which helps you capture the context and the intent behind the user query. And that has proven to be a game changer in a lot of different kind of search implementations. So I guess that's what you came here for, to know how and what is the formula to apply vectors to your existing search engine. So I came up with this term, which hopefully would stick to you after the presentation as well, because it uh, also resonates um, what it is meant to do, vectorize. So as part of the first uh, step, the vector extraction, we basically are using existing data to vectorize, tweak the existing indexing process to accommodate vector data. It would also involve like what kind of model do you select, uh, what kind of config changes do you need to make to accommodate vectors into your existing um, search engine, followed by step two, which basically talks about uh, converting your current text queries into vector queries, and also transforming your existing search API to support the information retrieval using vectors. Once we've had changes on the indexing and on the searching side, of course, we would need something in uh, place which is there to make sure that we are constantly improving. So we have introduced the third part of the pro process here that uh, basically takes care of the optimization for relevancy improvement and efficiency, which basically feeds the improvement inputs into your first um, step of this process, which is vector extraction. So one of the suggestions, a practical one that we have found to be working really well with all our clients in all the uh, proof of concepts and the regular implementations that we've done is that when you're starting with this journey, keep it simple from theory until the practice. So the idea here is that identify one business use case where you think that vectors could really help you and exemplify the value with a small POC. Don't go completely overboard into investing too much into fine-tuning models and having infra that supports your complete uh, data set. So you can use your existing Lucene-based uh, search engine for that, because Lucene now natively supports vectors. And you can use uh, an off-the-shelf uh, model from Hugging Face, especially Hugging Face has really commoditized all the language models now. So make sure that you focus on the part three of the process, experiments, to prove the improvements, because otherwise it would not really be worthy to spend so much and, uh, you know, in the end, no results. The focus as the first part of this implementation should be on the analytical understanding. We understand the process completely. And we can understand, as uh, one of the consultants, that uh, this process could be really taxing, which is why one of my personal recommendations is that you could leverage Chorus as the foundational framework to accelerate your initial development process. So what is Chorus, if you may ask me? So Chorus is basically a Dockerized toolset, which has a full-fledged support for a search engine, a user interface, a search management uh, capabilities, which are provided by Quirky, which is a query rewriting library, which we have intensively used for vectorizing uh, the search engine. And the offline experimentation, the important part, is something that's taken care of by Cupid. I would also be sharing my results later in the slides uh, about how we can leverage all of these. So this is basically the pictorial representation of the process that I introduced you to earlier, vectorize. So remember, these are the steps here. The third step is not part of the slide here, um, as of now. And uh, for the vector extraction part here, we are doing that, uh, uh, as of now, online or offline, as per your choice. We have used uh, two different models. I would be talking about that as well in a bit. So as part of the uh, step one, vector extraction is done here, involving changes to your existing indexing pipeline to accommodate vectors on the chosen fields using a chosen transformer model. So once this step is done, as you can see in the search engine, we already have vectorized uh, data set. So vectors have already become part of your search engine. So your step two, which is a bigger block on the top, it consists of um, conversion of text queries into vectors and uh, transformation of your search API to support information retrieval through vectors. We have invested a lot of time, and we came up with this approach that we've used Quirky, as you can see on the top. Uh, to help us with the rewriting part of the queries uh, using vectors. So vectors basically are sourced by this encoding service, which is obviously hosting uh, two different services to support encoding in two different um, models for text and for image. 
So once again, I would like to uh, focus on that I'm using MiniLM from the Sentence Transformer for the text vector model. And for images, I've used uh, Clip Model from OpenAI. So there are, of course, uh, some implementation uh, like details, uh, especially if you notice on the UI from where we are sending the request. Uh, we can still uh, send in the normal request, normal text request. And we are also supporting basically the four different ways in which you could interact with vectors. So two of those approaches involve plain vector queries, like pure vector queries, uh, the KNN retrieval by uh, text, vector model, uh, text vectors and image vectors. And to also exemplify the hybrid approach that it could support, we have uh, boost by text vectors and boost by uh, image vectors as well. So obviously, I don't have really the kind of time that I could go through like the live demo. So which is why I have some snapshots here not covering and not demoing the entire possibility of what we have achieved with this. But please uh, catch me offline, and uh, we'll uh, give you a live demo as well. But uh, just to give an example of what we have improved, so if you can see the, for the query projector screen, if you look at the results that we fetched through BM25, we were getting a lot of accessories, a lot of you know, things that are used in the projector screen, but not really a lot of projector screens. So when we used the same query with text vectors, we got actually projector screens. So you can see the uh, recall has really improved. Also, we tried this with the typo queries. So smartwatch, smartwatch by Samsung. Samsung as a brand is misspelled here, which was handled pretty gracefully by the image vector model. So third part, addressing optimization for relevancy improvement and efficiency, which is absolutely required to address the burning question, is my search quality really improving using vectors? Well. Of course, uh, in the long run, we cannot really rely on LGTM or my personal hunch, we are improving. We need really a methodology which is proven and repeatable to ensure that uh, we avoid taking bigger risk and we can conduct experiments in a more controlled environment before putting them online. So we recommend you check out Cupid, uh, which is a great tool to help you put a metric on your improvements and help you with better decision making if uh, vectors are the good choice for you. So as promised, I would like to quickly walk you through what uh, we achieved with it. So because I did not really have a designated use case here, I've used uh, query types uh, for which the resource have been provided. Uh, if you can see here on the top of the columns, these are considerably kind of a use case, like the exact query match, the product query match, product type query match, the symptoms, features, themes, compatibility, slangs and acronyms, and typos as some of the use case examples that you can basically apply vectors. And these are basically the algos of the information matching that um, I have listed down here. As you can clearly see that for exact matches, BM25 still stands out. It's amazing. And for queries that involve something to do with languages, of course, this is where the text vector model stands out. Absolutely amazing. Anything that has more visual features, for example, color, pattern, style, et cetera, this is where image model really shines. But one of the things as a personal kind of, uh, I wouldn't say recommendation, but personal uh, uh, result is that uh, the hybrid model seems to have succeeded and is, it seems like it's a very practical uh, approach to go for. Uh, I have also provided details about what the kind of data set that I've used. Um, it's also provided in course, but uh, due to the limited time, I would like to walk you through the caveats. As any approaches as it may give, uh, one of the caveats is that you need to invest a lot of time in finding a transformer model that suits your business needs. There are some limitations of the model. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was that uh, the clip model has the limitation that it can only encode 77 tokens, which is why we switched to MiniLM, which supports 256 tokens. So this is something that you need to watch out for. Again, one of the hot discussion is that how many dimensions I need. So dimensions are not free, people. Please choose them wisely. It may involve a lot of uh, infrastructural changes as well. And the heart of this entire process is the vector encoding service, which is why you need to make sure that you have a fast and scalable access to vector services. Again, one thing that I want to call out is that KNN consistently uh, retrieves N results, which means that even though the relevancy may be, uh, seem to be declining, it would still fetch you like N results as uh, you have configured in your uh, configuration. 
other things that we wanted to experiment with, uh, with the fine-tuned model support, which would like to show in the next slide, and combining vectors with managed search. This is something that we achieved through Quirky as well. It's a great tool for sure. And two of the other things that are still in progress is vector-based re-ranking model and combining scores of different vector approaches. So as I promised, I wanted to show you about the fine-tuning, and this uh, fine-tuned model is... Uh, I mean, I want to thank uh, uh, Gina AI for this. They have helped us and assisted us and guided us through the entire process of like, fine-tuning this model. Big uh, shout out to them. So as you can see, that for the query organizing stuff for Office, which is obviously pretty clear query as from the human language point of view, results with BM25 based retrieval was like pretty vague. With image model, we got some of the results which were really relevant. But when we use the fine tune model, obviously all of the results seemed super relevant. So I did not really have an aspect, as I said before, business use case, which is why I used one of the aspects that I introduced before as the query type. So I have used like the theme, thematic queries, as one of my business case for the model fine tuning, and we got pretty impressive results, I must say. So as I said, looking at the timeline that I have, uh, these are some of the references. You can find the query types and uh, the model cutscenes, obviously, from Hugging Face. And if you want to find out more uh, vector and relevant stuff, feel free to check out our blog at opensourceconnections.com. And feel free to also check out uh, Chorus, which is available in the Solar and Elastic uh, search engine flavor. Apart from that, that is my talk. And I guess we can take some questions. I hope it was not too fast. Thank you so much, Atita. And we have time for a couple of talks. Please raise your hand, and I can bring the mic to you. Thank you. Um, I've heard that uh, until now, it was um, you had to fine tune your uh, language model to, to do some uh, vector search. And uh, I'm wondering whether that has changed with the recent uh, large language model. It seems. You still need some fine tuning, right? I would say so. I think that's what we were also trying to depict. Uh, but I would say for the POC or to prove that the concept works or is useful in your business use case, I think it is OK to still use model off the shelf as available. But for specific maybe cases like typos or maybe you have a, a specific case where fine tuning may be still required. But overall, I think it works fairly well. Thank you. Uh, is there one last question for Atita? All right, I think. Well, I'm really impressed that people really understood this <laughs> or they did not understand anything. But feel free to catch up with me um, backstage. I would be looking forward to your questions. Yeah, and you can also connect with her on LinkedIn, and she will also share her slides with us. So if you have any questions, once you get back home, please feel free to reach out to her.